be taking a look at my two meter slash 70 centimeter Yagi antenna. Uh, they are set up on two different BNCs, so uh, you could work satellites with this if you wanted. Uh, I mostly just use the two meter portion and don't even attach the seven centimeter elements because uh, the two meter portion seems to tune up on 70 centimeter pretty well also, so uh, I can just uh, avoid putting these on, but if you want to do both, uh, it's a possibility. Uh, this is kind of a combination between the tape measure Yagi's and the Aero Yagi's. Uh, there's plenty of videos around uh, both of those, so I won't get into it. So the least self-explanatory component here is how we have our driven element set up. This is the same for both the 70 centimeter and the 2 meter portion. Uh, basically we have our coax running through the handle from the BNC along the beam to uh, this little 3D printed unit here where you can see that the coax is split into the, uh, the core and the shielding. Uh, the shielding going to one side and the core going to the other. The core, of course, is your signal and that's going to be uh, basically your driven side. This is going to be your ground or your shielding on the other end. Uh, so basically what I made here was a little brass washer that would slip over this uh, screw-in stud uh, that whenever you screw this arrow into it, the base part of the arrow right here will press up against that washer which the, uh, the elements of the coax are soldered to. So uh, basically you just set your little washer down inside this slot, then you can screw in this headless bolt right here, and then you can screw your arrow on, and whenever it screws all the way up, it butts up against that washer inside of there, and that's what makes your contact with this. Um, it's great for direction finding. Uh, it's obviously not the best connection, so if you're going to transmit through it, uh, you can't get quite as low uh, SWR out of it as you would if you uh, made it to where it couldn't break down. But uh, it does alright for direction finding. I'm getting down to like 1.25 or so on the 2 meter side. The 70 meter isn't, uh, the 70 centimeter isn't quite as good, but uh, I haven't messed with that as much because I don't really have a need for it yet because I don't really mess around with satellites at this point. But the entire thing breaks down uh, pretty compact into this little nylon bag I made for it. Uh, you can just see that each of the elements screws off of uh, the beam itself. The elements that just go straight through the beam, I have the screw glued into one side and then I can uh, screw them together to make one long piece, uh, thereby uh, reducing the number of pieces that we have in the bag. Uh, right here, the 2 meter and 70 centimeter portions are almost identical in the way that they assemble. You know, you just have to get your measurements for uh, your spacing and your element length. Uh, but that's, that's pretty simple. You can get that from an app or from an online calculator. You can see you can match up your element lengths to help keep them uh, organized. You can just screw them together so they stay matched up so you don't have to uh, sort through them every time you try to assemble your antenna. That is except for your uh, driven element because it has two uh, female ends on it. It doesn't have a screw attached because both the screws are in this uh, coupler right in the middle. The 2 meter section is just the same as the 70 centimeter. Here in the middle I have the coax split having the, uh, the core going to this side and the shielding coming to this side. Uh, and to tune it all I do is I just grind down the length of these until basically it reads the lowest SWR I can get out of it, which, which for mine is about 1.2, which you know isn't perfect, but it, it's usable, um, especially since I don't really ever transmit through it. I only, uh, I only listen. We're doing like radio direction, finding that type of thing. It works pretty well. Uh, the main reason why we uh, couldn't go with the traditional arrow uh, antenna design is I wanted to be able to do just this and having that extra little leg that uh, comes out here next to your driven element and has that little connector that you slide up and down I couldn't think of a way to uh, efficiently do that and not lose your tune basically every single time you break it down and then you have to retune it once you put it back together uh, this isn't the fastest thing to do, but you can see how it definitely doesn't take too long to break down your entire antenna and store it away uh, in a packable form.
So I've made this nylon case. I can just slide all my elements into there, shake it down, and it closes on the end with Velcro. And then I also have little Velcro tabs that I use to attach it to the beam itself so it stays uh, like one nice one nice package here so it's easily transportable but anyways there we go like I said the uh, STLs will be linked below in case you want to print all these parts off for yourself okay so we've worked our way out to a uh, repeater this is the furthest one I'll be able to hit with this um, it's just a little bit over 50 miles away uh, but it seems that we can hit it pretty reliably. Uh, we have a pretty good signal coming back from it too. Here we go with the stock antenna. We can see if uh, we can activate it with this. Nope, no activation there. So uh, we can still receive on the stock antenna, but we can't open the repeater. So uh, obviously uh, be able to transmit that far and get a good signal through is definitely outside of the range of uh, little rubber duck antennas but that's the nice thing about the Yagi is you can really uh, push that signal out there further.